Hi there, you're in the lab with your mate JJ. It's been about three weeks and I haven't released a video. Um, I think I owe you a bit of an explanation, so I'll, I'll tell you what's been going on. I, uh, I was working on uh, the Maxitronics 20M1. This is project number nine. You can see it assembled here in the background. Um, I had all sorts of trouble with it and um, in the end, you know, I, I learned a whole lot about it, about the, the multi-vibrators and, uh, and, and how to use a capacitor and a diode to uh, interface it with the rest of the board and uh, it was really good uh, help for me on the EEV blog forum. Uh, just in their beginners forum, I've asked a few times over there for help and they've been very helpful. So I learned a few things and uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's on my to-do list is to do project number nine. Um, in fact, it's half done, but I'm going to have to do it again because I, I made a whole lot of mistakes and missteps and such. Um, and in the course of doing project number nine, I realized there's an opportunity to, to actually make my videos better and more interesting. Um, and what I'm planning to do is add, if not two, then at least one new segments to the, um, to the Maxitronics project kits. Uh, one of the segments, which I, I'm pretty sure I will definitely be doing, is using the software called LT Spice uh, to do spice simulations of, uh, of the circuits. So that will uh, entail uh, taking the schematic uh, and drawing it up in the LT Spice program and then running a simulation, so uh, adjusting the, uh, the, 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 uh, the resistance on a, on a CDS cell you know, artificially to simulate the presence of light or, um, or, or just pulsing the circuit with a pulse and this sort of thing. Uh, I had two really gnarly problems which were hard to figure out. One of them was how to model the piezoelectric buzzer um, and I got some help with that and I've had to go at it. I think I've got it mostly figured out. Uh, it turns out there was a thing in SPICE in the miscellaneous thing uh, for the for the uh, t for these kinds of devices, and they're mostly modelled as a capacitor. Uh, anyway, I've had a bit of a go at that, and it seems to be okay. So that ticked that off. Um, the transistors and resistors and capacitors, no problem there. Um, but the CDS cell also, I was a bit of a question mark about how I'd go about modelling that. But I think I figured that out too. So um, I haven't yet done a complete spice simulation, but I will be doing project number nine. Um, and when that spice simulation is done, I'll be ready to re-record this video. Um, the other thing is I realized that my ambition to re release one video every day is too ambitious. I just won't be able to do it. So what I'm going to try and do is three videos per week um, and uh, we'll see how we go with that. And um, in addition to the new LT Spice simulation that I'll definitely be doing, I might also be doing a circuit board build and manufacturer uh, in KiCad. So KiCad's the software that you can use to create gerber files to send to a manufacturer to have PCBs made. Um, and I thought um, if my friends at PCBWay uh, will sponsor that, then, then we'll do it. So I'm talking to them at the moment to see um, if, if, if that's something that, that they'd be happy to sponsor me to do. So if, if, if they're happy to make the, um, the, the circuit boards, then I'm happy to design them and put them together. Um, and I think that'd be great. And, and, and if I do do that, I'll be releasing those circuit boards into their uh, community shared projects, um, you know, so that'd be good. And the other thing I was thinking, um, if I am going to be doing that, um, the, the form factor that I will use um, for the circuits that I'll be designing, I decided I'd make it uh, the same form factor as an Arduino Uno. Now that's an Arduino Uno there. Um, and in fact, this is what today's project's gonna be about. So we'll be looking at this again soon. But I thought this circuit board with its little particular bits with power and USB and switches and uh, mounting holes and um, and, and, and expansion uh, slots and all, all of that, I thought that would be a good um, form factor for the, um, for the, the Maxitronics projects. I, I think that all of the, the relevant uh, components would fit on a board that, that, that was this size and there might be advantages to having hats be able to fit on top of it or boards or, 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 or cases that, that house these kinds of boards. So I just thought if there was some standard that I could use, perhaps this is it. Um, 
Now, uh, so a few housekeeping things. First of all, uh, today's silly job title is the is Electron Enchanter. Today I'm the Electron Enchanter, um, and I'm uh, going to announce the books. So, um, for those who don't know, when I do a regular show like this one, I uh, I announce two other videos that will be coming up. One of them's the old book review, and the other is the new book review. So. Uh, the old book that I'll be reviewing is called Engineering Electronics, and it's by a bloke called John D. Ryder. It was published by McGraw-Hill uh, as part of their uh, Electrical and Electronic Engineering series. Um, it looks like it's been um, in some sort of a library. North Sydney Technical College. Fascinating. So this used to belong to a technical college in North Sydney. Um, they've got a long list of books that are available from the publisher in this series. And it was published in 1957. 1957. So that's our old book. We'll be taking a close look at that in the next video. And um, the new book that I'll be doing is The Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Uh, this is the fourth edition. It was published by McGraw-Hill also. Um, and it was by a bloke called Stan Gibalisco. Gibalisco. So uh, I've, I've read uh, up to page 115. Uh, that's my bookmark in there. So I've read half this book. Uh, usually I don't read the books before I, I do the teardowns. Uh, I call them a book teardown and not a book review because I don't actually read the book first and then review it. What I do is I look at it for the first time with you um, and I just look at the front and the back and then go in detail through the contents. Just have a look what's in there. I don't uh, actually review it. I just tear it down. Um, anyway, there'll be a, a, another video coming up with a new book teardown for the Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. And that's everything that brings you up to date. So um, uh, let's pop you over to the bench. Um, we'll, we'll get this guy, which we're not working on at the moment, out of the way. And what we're going to be doing is making uh, an adapter. I, I'm, I'm working with some friends of mine on uh, the IRC chat room that I hang out on. Um, and we're, um, we're, we're making uh, a MIDI synthesizer on a uh, microcontroller. Uh, now, I was going to be using uh, one of these little guys, um, which is a, uh, actually, uh, let's pop you over to the bench and, and I'll tell you about what we're doing. So you can have, I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you the bits and pieces. So over to the bench we go. Here we are on the bench. So um, I'll just uh, get that out of our way because we won't be working on that at the moment. And uh, here's what I was talking about. This is the uh, this is the 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 AT Tiny 85. Um, it's a it's a little um, microcontroller. You see, it's a it's a very small little dude. Um, I wonder if I could show you under the microscope even. Give me a second, and I'll just fire everything up. So uh, we won't be needing these, I don't think. Yep, our micro microscopes online so um, let me just put those away now um, you can't see the microscope but I can there it is now I'll just uh, I'll just put that on for you there we go. So I'll just throw you over there like that. Now this is the Atmel Tiny 85, con con uh, um, affectionately known as AT Tiny 85. Um, now uh, um, we'll be, um, I'll be I'll be playing with these in the future. This, by the way, this red thing here. Um, this is the the programmer for the um, for the uh, for the AT Tiny eighty five. So you can kind of see that there. You uh, you put the the, um, the 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 device under pro that you want to program in there, and then you you plug this end uh, into the uh, into the the computer, and and you can program it. And I've I've got this uh, as well, which is just a, a breakout board for the. Um, for the programmer so you can hook those um, uh, 
these onto uh, 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 um, a programmer. Yeah, you, you can use... Why am I so confused? Yeah, okay. You can use a different programmer and attach them uh, to the... I think it's called the ICSP header. Uh, anyway, let me stop bumbling on about these AT Tiny 85s because it turns out anyway uh, that we're not even going to be using uh, these microcontrollers to start with because my friend suggested that instead of using the AT uh, Tiny 85 for my first project, uh, that instead I use the Arduino Uno. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, so I'll just put this back away in his little drawer. Just clip him in first. It's in enough. Put those away. Um, and this is my Arduino Uno, uh, which I'll be working on. Um, and uh, <clears throat> what we'll be doing today is just making um, a, a, a case. Uh, well, not even necessarily a case, but uh, this piezo buzzer is what I'll be using to um, output from this project. Now, the project is a MIDI synthesizer. So it's basically, its job is to make music, and we make music by oscillating the, uh, the piezo buzzer at the right frequency. So that's what the software will do. I'll have to write the software. In order to do that, I'll have to figure out what I'm doing, and I, I really don't know what I'm doing yet. So, um, But one of the things that I will need is a board like this uh, with an output like this um, so that I can do the programming. And what I've learned so far is that um, when I'm testing this thing, uh, it makes a lot of racket. So I, I have to, um, obviously, I'll, I'll be making a lot of mistakes before it makes beautiful, beautiful music. And I don't want those mistakes to be too loud because it'll bother other people in my uh, household. So uh, I want this thing to make less noise than it does. So I'm going to try the obvious thing, which is putting a potentiometer in series with it uh, <laughs> so that um, I can turn it down. So I'll basically be adding a volume control to a piezo buzzer. Now, I've never done anything like this before, but I assume it's simple um, that I'll just put the, the, the piezo buzzer in series with a potentiometer of some spec. Um, we'll figure that out together now. And then, um, you know, uh, hopefully um, we'll be able to, uh, uh, to, have, to have a volume control. And I might uh, put the, make the housing a bit better. So uh, I haven't figured that out, but we'll figure that all out together. Now, I've just realized, um, first of all, um, I want to make a note. Now, I've got a notebook somewhere. Here is my notebook. Um, and uh, I've got a pencil somewhere as well. Where did I keep my pencil? <sighs> uh, here's a pencil. This isn't the one I was looking for, but it will do. Uh, I'm not sure what the date is today. It's somewhere in the... Uh, April. Uh, now, um, this is my Arduino Uno, and I'm using um, uh, pin 9, pin 9 uh, for the Piezo buzzer. Uh, plus, I'll put plus ground. I have to ground it as well. So we need to use pin 9 and the ground. Um, for the piezo buzzer. So remember that, we'll be able to plug that back in together later on. I might just turn that off. If I turn that off, do you, does it get better for you? Maybe it does. So um, uh, let's... Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to have to take a quick break and go over to my computer and reprogram this so that it automatically plays the tone when I turn it on. Because at the moment... Uh, you need to control it via USB and send a start command for it to turn on. But we want it to just turn on automatically so that we can test it. Um, and, uh, um, and, and once it's doing that, we can add the uh, potentiometer. We can figure out what potentiometer might be the most appropriate to use. And then we'll solder everything onto a little board and we'll think about putting it in some kind of housing. But honestly, that might not be necessary. If I just put it on a board, uh, that might do.
In fact, I might even just use the other side of this board. This is uh, uh, just a breakout board that I made to drive uh, a, a handful of LEDs. So we might just use the other side of that there. Um, and I'm not sure what um, uh, potentiometer I'll be using. I've got a couple. Uh, I've got some big ones and I've got some little surface mount ones and they might actually be um, not surface mount, but um, you know, the little screwdriver trim pot things. So, um, all right, just uh, give me five seconds. It will, it will take no time at all for you. We'll do a jump cut, but I'm going to duck over to the uh, computer and I'm going to make this thing beep automatically uh, when it turns on. So I'll be right back. All right. Well, here I am. I'm back. Uh, there's our, um, our circuit. Now, uh, I guess if I'm going to be honest with you, uh, I actually didn't have to do anything at all. I, uh, I plugged this thing and it started beeping at me. So uh, uh, I don't remember making it work that way, um, but it seems to be working that way. So that's good enough for me at the moment. So I'll just plug this guy in. Now we're going to give him some power uh, through the uh, USB. That's a, that's a USB type B. Plug him in there. Now he didn't start operating straight away because I've got a power switch on it. So if I throw the power, it starts to beep at me. Um, and as you can hear, that's just a little bit loud. So we want to take the edge off that by adding a uh, potentiometer in series. Now I've got, I've got a bag full or a box full or a drawer full of potentiometers. Um, so that's not going to be any sort of a problem, is it? I've got 10K and 1K and 1 meg and 100K. So what do we reckon? Uh, I reckon, hmm, I don't know. The other thing I might do is just have a look and see if I've got any uh, resistors. I think I may do. Have a look here. What are these? Yep, that's a potentiometer box, and so is this. Okay, now um, obviously uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look closely um, and just see what we're dealing with here. I'll just put my uh, equipment away. Um, so uh, let's see what's in this box here. Okay, they've got a very tiny little um, little one there, uh, and I'm not seeing. Might as well throw you over to the uh, to the microscope again, and let's see if we can read what's on this thing. What does that say? Give it some more light, huh? Can we read that? I'm having trouble reading that. Is it the focus? Yeah, it is. Okay. It says uh, Bay Ota 3296 XCHC Electron. <sighs> it says, does it say 0W? I'm not sure. And then it's got 1, 2, 3. But it doesn't actually say. Uh, what it is, but I did pick it out of this drawer here. So let's just put it back in there. Anyway, that's what we're dealing with. It's a little. Um, can you see that? Maybe you'll see it better there. That's uh, that's the 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 bit that we've got for adjusting the uh, the trim pot. Just a little a screw screw tip. I've got a little. Um, I'll throw you back over to the main. Now I've got this guy, which is a, a, a ceramic uh, a screwdriver, and I believe it'll fit in there. Yeah, it will. So I can use this ceramic screwdriver to adjust the, uh, the trim pot. And once it's adjusted, I probably won't need to be readjusting it very often. So I think at this, this point, this is a very good looking bit of equipment. It meets the criteria. And if I'll be able to fit it in, uh, into my circuit board, I I can. Okay, that's good. I kind of like that. 
Um, uh, but let's have a look at the other ones here. Um, and and these are uh, these are different. Um, they're a different form factor, uh, and they they support uh, a considerably larger um, screwdriver, uh, including by the looks of it, Phillips head, which is something, isn't it? So, eh, decisions, decisions. I guess I could use both of them and then just adjust it whichever one's more convenient. I'm going to use this one, I think, and uh, <coughs> um, we might as well just quickly um, uh, measure it and figure out uh, what we're dealing with uh, from that slot. So that should be 1K. 1K is probably good enough. Although I have to say, 1K and 10K are probably the most common. Um, I might try a 2K resistor. Um, and, uh, and we'll see how we go with that. So um, we're going to need some alligator clips, which we've got over here, I think, from earlier. So uh, let's just uh, let's try putting this thing together. So we've got uh, one, one clip in the middle. I think it would be better if we had some, some smaller clips. I've only got these great big honking alligator things. Um, I probably need... To... Uh, let's have a look in here, huh? So, um... These are my probes. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, but look, at, uh, it needs to be soldered on. I wonder if we can do better over here. I'm going to have to um, make some probes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. We could do that together just now, I suppose. Should we do that? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we, we probably should. I'll do that as another project later on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to... Oh, what am I going to do? Mm, it's tempting to make this uh, cable. Uh, shall we just pivot over to making the cable and then I'll make the, the buzzer some other time? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Oh... I'm struggling. What are we going to do? Yeah, let's make some cables. All right. So, uh, plot twist. Plot twist. We'll, um, we'll put this away. Now, this was a 2K, so I'll just put him back in the 2K box. Um, and uh, let's make some cables. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take those uh, and we're going to solder on... Uh, some uh, some jumpers. All right, so this is going to be fun. We're going to need our soldering iron. So uh, let's do that. We'll put the soldering iron on, and we'll turn him on. Now he's there, uh, soldering away. Okay. Um, now uh, our screwdriver. That's for adjusting our potentiometer. We don't need that. Um, all right, so we're going to be making some cables. And then once I make those cables, I'm going to come back in a separate video and we're going to finish off our resistor potentiometer. So today is cable day. Of course, uh, our cables are one of our most favorite things to make on this channel. So um, I picked these uh, hook clips up from somewhere. I don't know where, probably somewhere on AliExpress. It doesn't say here. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do, uh, let me just show you. Uh, I'm going to take uh, these. Now, these are male to female DuPont. Okay, male to female DuPont. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut them in half. Uh, and then we're going to put um, one end... On, uh, on uh, for black, one end 
on uh, on a female clip and one end on a male clip. And then if I want to have a, a black clip with two black ends, I'll just plug them together in the middle, the male and the female, and then I'll have a clip that's about this long. Uh, actually, you know, no, I'm, I'm going to change that. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to make them longer than that. I'm going to make them longer than that. So I'm going to use a full length, and I'm just going to chop off one of the ends. Um, and uh, since we'll be doing that, I'll just uh, um, because I've got um, twice as many of the um, of the end-to-end -end ones, um, I'll use those instead. So we just need uh, some of the same length, uh, and, and that'll be that'll be good for us. So we're going to need. Uh, I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see colours properly. Uh, we've got blue and green. And black and red and yellow. Great, five. Five colors like me, your mate, JJ5. So um, we're gonna need uh, red. So let's do red, one red and one red. And then orange, so we'll do orange. There's one. Oh, no, I made a mistake. What have I done? All right, so we got one red. Not sure what I've done there. I've confused myself. Anyway, this is male to male. This is female to female. We've got one red uh, female, so we're going to need uh, one red male, and then we've got one orange. Females, so we're going to need one orange male, and then we've got yellows. We don't care for yellows, and then we've got green. So we've got uh, one green male. So we're going to need one green uh, female. So this is one green female, and then we're going to need blue. So we've got one blue female, and we're going to have one blue male, and then I believe it's only black to go. So black. There's one black male and then there's one black female. And that, my friends, is a full set. I've got a couple of leftovers here. So I'll put these away. Got, uh, female there, male there, and uh, that's male and male in there. And all of those are females, so they can go in there. All right, I think we're done with those. I'll just, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, uh, I'll caffeinate. You want to keep your nerds caffeinated. All right, so uh, let's put those together. Just confirm. I suppose I should have confirmed before I put everything away. If we're lucky, we haven't made a mistake. Uh, yeah, that seems pretty solid to me. All right, good. Now, we're going to be putting it on here. Uh, that's a different project, isn't it? All right. And we're going to just be making some cables. So... Uh, Let's clip these things. Now we just need to clip one end uh, and then the other end will be correct. So uh, let's cut these things off. Snip. And uh, snip. Now we're going to need a wire stripper. So I'll, I'll pull that down. Uh, 
um, and I haven't uh, attached cables to these things before in my memory so uh, we'll have to have I will have to figure that out hopefully it's uh, straightforward and obvious uh, there's a bunch of leftover bits of pieces I'll put them in the in the scrap pile All right. Now, my uh, my trusty Topex wire cutter. Uh, I'm not sure how much wire we're going to need to chop. Let's start with these uh, yellow ones. I wonder if there was yellow. I seem to have orange. Are they yellow or orange? I don't know. I don't think it matters much. Now, let's see if we can just pull this off. Yes, we can. Okay, great. And then do we just push it back on? I think we do. Wonderful. That's easy. Very easy. So, uh, it's just a matter of sending the, uh, sending the wire through this hole here. Um, and then uh, soldering it on here uh, and then we're done excellent uh, now I'm going to oh it sort of doesn't matter does it yeah cool all right all right good so um, we'll just do one first uh, I'm going to just put this on uh, on small, I don't think we're going to need to chop off much. Yeah, that'll do. And we'll pop this guy in here. So we're just going to take some insulation off our uh, thing. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, we're going to need some solder. Have you got any solder? No. Chop off some solder. Right. Well, now the important thing is to put the the plastic bit on before we uh, before we solder. So let's do all of the plastic bits to start with, huh? Why not? Um, because uh, if we don't do them and we forget, we're going to have a bad day, and we don't want to have a bad day. I'm having a good day. Today's a good day. I heard a thing today, my friend told me, he said, uh, have you heard of the word trigger? You know, you get triggered, like something upsets you and it triggers you. Well, he, th he thought that there should be an antonym for trigger. Uh, and he, his suggestion was glimmer. So instead of being triggered, you can be glimmered. And when you're glimmered, you, you, you see something and it makes you happy and, and it gives you a happy reaction. Um, and, uh, and the theory is that, uh, you know, because we sort of manifest what we believe, if we, uh, if we have good thoughts, we, get, we, we notice more good stuff. So there we go. <clears throat> I tell you, um, I really love this lab of mine that I've put together over the last couple of years. And, uh, and when I walk into my lab uh, every day, I just love walking in. It makes me happy. I think it's really cool. I love being in here. I love making electronic cables with my friends on YouTube. Uh, and uh, yeah, for me, my lab is a bit of a glimmer. Just one of those things that makes me happy. Oh, now I've just... Uh, oh, sorry, I bumped you. Uh, I've just found a loose wire here on the, uh, on the bench. And I don't like loose wires because they're... Uh, short circuit waiting to happen so I'll just uh, deal with that while I notice it now we're almost done here threading the uh, the ends on to our, uh, our cables and uh, and once that's done we can solder everything together but we'll uh, we'll just test that the uh, the insulation levels about right um, I want to put that on. So, uh, 
I suppose we just thread it through, bend it back, solder it on. So there we go, we just thread it through and bend it back and solder it on. Sounds reasonable to me. I might actually get uh, the old trusty uh, third hands for this particular job. There's some third hands and uh, just want to hold it steady down there so let's put that there. There we go. Yes, that looks quite good to me. All right. So we're just going to need a little bit of uh, heat and a little bit of solder. Now it looks like I've got my uh, my probes connected and jumbled here. Oh, I want to poke myself in the eye with my uh, soldering iron. Let's check that that's all in good order. Now it says it's on 350. 350 is a pretty reasonable temperature. That's 350 Celsius. I don't know what that is for my American friends. 350. 662 Fahrenheit. 662 Fahrenheit. Um, but I call it 350 Celsius. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. So uh, I think we call that done. I'm just going to take this probe off because we won't be needing him. <clears throat> I can smell a little bit of burning plastic. I assume that was the uh, insulation. I hope it wasn't anything else. Oh, no. Yeah, I melted the, uh, the side here. Can you see that? So we're just going to be careful of that next time. In fact, we'll do it the other way around, won't we? That would be better. Uh, anyway, that looks pretty good to me. Pretty good to me. And if we just put that down. Now. Okay. All right. So we're going to put it um, uh, under that way. Sounds good to me. All right, let's do another yellow. <sighs> do another yellow. Now we only need a little bit of insulation off. So, uh, actually I'm just gonna do the whole lot um, and then we'll come back for the, uh, for the soldering. So, here we go, doing some wire cutting. Not wire cutting, insulation stripping. Wire stripping. Oh boy. Anyway, I'm glad I'm back in the lab making some videos. I've, uh, I've been so busy. I, uh, I have all sorts of things going on at the moment. And I'm learning all sorts of things. I need to learn how to use KiCad to make PCBs. Uh, and I need to use uh, learn how to use LT Spice. Um, but I'm also learning how to use the Arduino IDE and the um, microchip uh, development environment. They've got an IDE as well, which is happily based on NetBeans. I'm a bit of a NetBeans fanboy. In fact, I've just recently stopped using NetBeans, which I've been using for a long, long time, uh, and started to use uh, um, Visual Studio Code instead. And I did that because I was interested in GitHub Copilot, which I, I am uh, evaluating. Uh, and so far, so good. Although, uh, it wrote some microcontroller code for me the other day, and... Uh, Honestly, I didn't understand it. <laughs> so I've, I've had that experience now of, uh, of, uh, of the AI outsmarting me. Uh, 
on this particular issue, I think I'll be able to catch up. I'll be able to learn about it. But uh, I think it uh, it's uh, it, uh, it's an omen of what is to come. Now that's our first yellow. So let's do uh, another yellow, and we're going to solder in the other way around this time, so that. Uh, uh, So that we don't melt the uh, the plastic when we apply our soldering iron. So there's a thing. Now we're going to want to put this here. All right. I don't know if you can hear that. Someone's thumping around out there in the kitchen. <clears throat> so, uh, I think this is about right. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. No, it's not right. There's something wrong. Uh, will it matter? I don't know. Let's just put it together and we'll see how we go. fairly good to me. Now, it's pretty good. Let's put this up. Now we want the hole to be on the same side as the uh, as the clip. Then they'll all be symmetrical and symmetry makes me happy. Does symmetry make you happy? Alright, there we go. So we've got a full set of oranges um, and we should be able to put them together and uh, and they they should uh, let's just see if we can put that there there we go it doesn't want to pop in why not that's not what I was expecting should just be easy in you go no it doesn't want to go in. Have I done something wrong? I don't know. There we go. Not sure why that that was so tight. There we go. It's a bit loose now as well. Tight on one hand, loose on the other. That's not what we want. Anyway, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? And if we just um, put our... Uh, our multimeter into uh, continuity mode um, and uh, um, will it beep? No, it's not beeping. How do we put it on beep? Uh, diode. There we go. Yep, there we go. So if we just uh, clip one end on there and clip one end on here, we should get beep, beep, beep. Yep, beep, beep, beep. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, that's um, uh, uh, yellow done. So now we can just do all of the other ones. All right, so let's do red. Uh, let's twist him together. Now, what was the rule? We come in this way. Uh, yeah. This way, and then back, and then down. Hold him in place, and a little bit of solder. That's not working. Pretty good to me. It's funny how um, how sort of less is more with solder, isn't it? Less is more. So let's pop this guy up. Now we want the hole on the same side, isn't that how we did it? Yeah, it is. Hole on the same side.
There it is. Oh no, I've just bent it. Dear me. Can't take me anywhere. I don't want my red to be ruined. I like, I'm going to use my red. Red and black, they're the main game. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. So let's do another red. Uh, let me twist him around a bit. Ah. Now, put him in there. Bend him back there. Pop him in there. I'm going to be an expert at this by the time I get to the end. Well, if I'm going to be an expert by the time I get to the end, I am not an expert already. Just wasted all of my flux there. So, uh, I think that, that worked okay. Now, I've uh, got uh, them on the bottom. All right. There we go. Looks pretty good to me. So, let's pop him together. This one's being hard like the other one was. I wonder if there's some trick to it that I don't quite understand. There we go. Might as well test him, huh? That uh, uh, multimeter, can you see that? It's going to beep anyway. So, uh, let's clip one together there. And we can just touch touch this one together. It should be. Oh, and we'll put it on continuity mode. That's what we wanted. All right, so red is done. And uh, now we do black. come through this way bend him on and pop him in here and apply some solder I'm sure it's not particularly good for you, but I do love the smell of that flux. It just smells like happiness, doesn't it? Reminds me of being in my lab doing electronics. There we go. Alright, that looks pretty good for black. So let's do the other side of black. Now we're just passing halfway. We've done two and a half, and we've got two and a half to go. Let's twist him on a little bit, and then pop him through there, bending back that way. Oh, he fell out. There we go. And pop him in there. That looks fairly good to me. <coughs> That's uh, my phone dinging at me. Got in contact with an old friend this afternoon, so with any luck, that's him getting back to me. I might just go and check that. I'll be back in a second. I'm back. Sorry to keep you waiting. Of course, I didn't keep you waiting. Um, yeah, and that was... Uh, my friend about tomorrow, going to go and hang out with my mate. So uh, that'll be very nice. And they can pick me up, which is even better. 
otherwise I have to get the train and trains really aren't my bag you know so that black one looks pretty good now we've got two blacks so let's see if we can clip them together and then There we go. All right, and we'll just test uh, the continuity. So this should still be beeping. Is it gonna beep, beep, beep? Yep, that's beeping. So let's pop him in there. That's me, uh, that's me pinging again, that's my friend. There we go, that black one's working. So three down. Two to go. And uh, I'm going to do blue. Oh boy. So uh, I guess after I make this video, I'll do the, uh, I'll do the book teardowns. Uh, and then I'll, I'll prepare to make another video for our potentiometer thing. That'll be a separate project. So I've got uh, six videos to make. This is the first one. I need to make uh, five more. That'll be uh, an extra project and an extra two book teardowns. I'm a busy boy. Um, and I also need to finish that uh, uh, Maxitronics kit that I've been working on for a month. Um, but I'm I kind of want to hear back from my mates at uh, at PCBWay to see if they're going to uh, uh, sponsor me for the for the circuit board component. Because if they will, I'll uh, I'll get that done too. I'm looking forward to that. I, I hope they say yes. Although I I am honestly quite surprised that they're even talking to me because they're a great big uh, multinational. Well, they're Chinese, but they're global. And, uh, and they've obviously, they've got a few big players. I saw um, Learn Electronics Repair. I think it's Richard from Learn Electronics Repair. Repair, And he's got heaps of subscribers. Uh, and he was doing ads for PCBWay. So uh, I just, uh, I feel like a very little fish in a very big pond. Um, and it's nice when the big, the big fish talk to the little fish. Excuse me a second, I'll just deal with that pinging phone. And I'm back. Just dealing with my phone. We're all slaves to our devices, aren't we? So, uh... Nearly done here. This is the penultimate cable. When we've done this one, we've got one to go and we're finished. I'm not sure if I made a video of the uh, of the board that I'm planning to attach that potentiometer to, because <clears throat> um, that was pretty cool. It was just a couple of uh, LEDs on a on a breakout board. Did I show you that? I think I showed you that earlier at the beginning of this video. See this thing? It's just uh, it's just some LEDs with a couple of uh, resistors. Um, and it's got a, a ground plane and then uh, a couple of, of uh, jumpers uh, just for outputting stuff on your uh, microcontrollers mostly. Um, anyway, I'm not sure if I made a video when I made that board. I don't remember. Occasionally I do do projects that, uh, that I don't make videos for, but... Uh, I like to take the opportunity to make a video when I'm doing something, even if it's just something simple like these cables. So, uh, there we go, that looks pretty good to me. So we'll test this guy. Every time, I don't know if I'm pushing it the wrong way or, or what, it's just hard to go in. So let's make sure our continuity mode beep is still beep, beep, beeping. Beep, beep, beep. What have I done? I've dropped it. So there we go. Pop him on there. Yep, that's beeping. So if we hook that on there, all we need is continuity. 
So a little beep will do. There we go. That's beeping. All right, and now there's just green to go for the fifth set. And then we'll be finished. All right. <sighs> Nearly there. Alright, that one's working. And so this is the last one. <clears throat> so uh I was chatting to a friend and he he, uh, he, he 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 at his company they don't let you use AI. So you can't use copilot or git chat GPT. I'm planning to use them. I think they're great. Huh. I, uh, I I really find ChatGPT helps me a lot understanding this electronic stuff. It's uh, it's kind of like having access to a tutor. Ask it questions and it can clarify things for you. Very specific things that you might be a little bit confused about. <sighs> Been learning about all sorts of stuff lately. I'm trying to learn about microcontrollers actually. Got a lot to learn. Alright, well that's green done, which is the last one. There we go. Alright, so we'll give it the beep test. And put him on that one. And beep, beep, beep. There we go. That's working. All right. Get our solder out of the way. And we'll turn him off. We don't need him anymore. And there we are. Full set. So uh, let's have a look at our set. There we go. So now we've got five test clips that can actually be split into 10 test clips as long as you don't mind uh, what's on the end of them. So you've got uh, male ones and we've got female ones and by default they're just straight through aren't they? So uh, I've got a Logic Probes box um, and if we just make some room we can probably keep those in here. Up the back there. Those, those can go up the back there. Uh, those don't, eh, I don't know what they're doing in here. I don't know. Anyway, they can stay. So uh, we should be able to just put them uh, in there. And that, they'll, uh, they'll be available when we need them in the, the Logic Probes container. Wonderful. So I might as well uh, throw you around to the welcome camp and we'll wrap this thing up. So uh, what we did today obviously was make uh, our cables. I was going to be titling this video um, uh, potentiometer day, but uh, uh, the potentiometer, uh, that's going to be our next project. So uh, today's project was our um, hook clips. So we've got five of those now, five complete sets that can break into a set of uh, 10, 
with uh, male on one end and female on the other end, so that's pretty handy. Um, yeah, that concludes today's project uh, on the Electron Enchanter, uh, and I'll see you soon for the uh, old book teardown, and then after that the new book teardown, and then after that we'll make a potentiometer for our, uh, our microcontroller with a, uh, a buzzer attached. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see the next videos, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.